should have seen it coming, I suppose. May I add that I welcome this? The biting, I mean. You have your wish. Is it going to hurt? I always wondered if it's... It's locked, all right. Convenient time. So Harriet Jones.
became the original carrier when Edgar gave her vampire blood. I must tell Elizabeth. Watch yourselves! There's one of them! believe I'm doing this.
Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Sorry, Nurse Brannigan. I won't witness the great doctor you were destined to be. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. sick of the poor Dr. Tippett's. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Princess, flee away while you can, for all is lost. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed.
I should have fled this rotten city with Milton since the first day of the contagion. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? to work, to take care of my children. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? surgeon. Oh, my God. 
So you were the proverbial wolf amongst the sheep, sir. I should have killed you for the sake of many. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Before my son. I die before my son. No. He needs me so much. So much. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. looking for. Mother, were you right all along? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry.
It's locked.
It's locked, all right.
know if I should read this. I can't believe it. at a more convenient time. Jonathan Reed. Can I help you in any way? Tell me the truth, Usher. Are you a vampire? By the stole, you really thought you could force Usher Talltree to yield to your little mind tricks like an oblivious mortal? Why? Can't I force you to answer me, then? I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. It comes with certain advantages, like accessing the greatest library in the country, and avoiding answering certain questions. So, are you or are you not a vampire? As a brilliant man once said, to be unambiguous could only be to one's own detriment. How did you learn about Mary? And spare me the hocus pocus parlor tricks. The truth, now! Swansea told me. Don't look at me like that. His task is to observe and gather information about vampires. He had to tell me about Mary.
Mary did not deserve her fate. She had already suffered enough during her life. And yet the pain and the suffering went on after her death. Suffering is part of the immortal condition. Some prefer to lose their minds rather than face the simple truth. The pain will never stop. I found your notebook. The one the guard of Prewen stole from you. And you've brought it back to me. That's excellent news, Jonathan. Were you able to keep yourself from reading it? <laughs> no. Ah, the oldest temptation of all. If Pandora herself did not pass the test, I suppose I should not blame you for your curiosity. So you're not angry with me? Why should I be? To live is to make choices, Jonathan. And you made yours. Now give it to me, please. Tell me about yourself. What do you do here, besides turning cards in the middle of the night? I'm for most a charlatan. For a few, I'm a vampire. And for you, I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander, yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. The red river, a song in the dark, the whispers of a sun, so many signs to interpret. It's locked. Good evening, Miss Price. You know you can call me Carolyn, my dear doctor. Do you need my medical attention, Miss Price? Oh yes, I feel so oppressed lately. And tired and feeble too. Thank you so much, Doctor. You're always so considerate. I'm just doing my job. Perhaps. But I have always been grateful for your concern. Do you often wound or hurt your daughter by mistake? No. I always thought it was Carol's clumsiness that caused these incidents. Maybe it's a family trait, Doctor. You really believe it's just bad luck and being clumsy, then? Of course, Doctor. What else could it be? I have nothing to hide. Does your daughter still worry you, Miss Price? I remember you were often concerned about her health when she was younger. Have you not seen Carol since you returned? She's almost a young woman now, but she'll always remain my sweet little baby. So you're less afraid? Some things never change. Carol is still too clumsy for her own good. Sometimes her innocence puts her in real danger. Why would her innocence put her in danger. She does not realize how cruel life can be. Maybe I was a bad mother to protect her too much. My poor dear Carol. You have every reason to be cautious, Miss Price. Especially in these difficult times. Maybe you could talk with her, Dr. Reed. It would be nice to have a man here more often. 
We would both feel safer. Goodbye for now, Miss Price. Dr. Reed, I am glad. It's locked. Good evening, Miss Price. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you remember me? Dr. Reed? Yes, of course. You are the doctor who healed me and my mum. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Good to see you too, Carol. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I, I did not hurt myself recently. I know how to take care of myself now. I'm almost a grown-up. Yes, it's true. I try to behave. I really do. But one way or another, I always end up injured or wounded. I'm so stupid. Why would you be stupid? It's like I can't help getting under my mother's feet. That's how I end up being pushed, cut, or, or burned. You see, I'm a stupid girl, really. When exactly do these accidents happen? Ever since I was little. That's why I need to stay with Mum. I'm not capable of taking care of myself. I am glad to see you. Do you enjoy working with your mother? Oh yes, Doctor. My mother raised me alone after my father died. We've always lived together, and she has always watched over me. Do you remember your father? No, I was just a baby then. My mother always told me how strong and good he was. Do you ever think about getting married now you're a woman? Oh no, Dr. Reed. Mum always says I'm still a child who has no idea how tough life can be. No husband would like a clumsy girl like me. Goodbye, Carol. I am sorry, I, I, I can't help you, sir. Perhaps you should talk with someone else instead.
what good fortune brings you back to me, Jonathan. What is it, my dear? I'm afraid it's bad news, Elizabeth. The worst, actually. Please, speak up. Edgar is no longer in McCullum's grasp. I resolved that matter. Where is our good friend now? Is he well? He was mortally wounded. I put an end to his misery. That is terrible, Jonathan. And yet you did what you must. The poor man. Edgar Swansea was responsible for the Skull epidemic, Elizabeth. It was he who unleashed the deadly scourge upon London. What? Are you certain? This is the most terrible accusation of all. He confessed everything to me. He sought to cure the disease, to exploit vampire blood to stop the epidemic. But he unwittingly gave birth to a catastrophe. All those poor victims. How could he do it? What happened? Edgar was a criminal. He abused every ethical tenet to test his theory about vampire blood as a cure for influenza. I must say I'm shocked, Jonathan. Who would have thought it? And the poor patient. Let me guess. It was Harriet Jones, was it not? Yes. That explains how Doris Fletcher was infected and how she became an i -core. She secretly visited her mother at Pembroke. Then we have no choice. We must act quickly, Jonathan. We must return to the sewers and put an end to the threat poor Harriet embodies. I have one more matter to discuss with you. Harriet Jones was the primary case, but... Do you know what a healthy carrier is? There is a tone in your voice that frightens me, Jonathan. What are you trying to say? It was your blood Edgar used for his experiment on Harriet Jones. What? No. No. This can't be. Oh. Elizabeth. Are you all right? Uh, no, I have to go. What do you mean? Leave me alone. Save the city, Jonathan. Save what can be saved. Elizabeth, I need answers. Why did your blood Stay cause Stay away this? from me. Please. I swear I never was your Wait. enemy. Wait. No. Elizabeth. <laughs> 